comic book haul for March 2021. Hey everyone, it's VM Campos, comic book fan, and I've got another comic haul for you this month. On the last week of the month, I do a comic haul where I show off every comic that I got that on that month. First up at Marvel, I picked up Alien number one, the Peach Momoko variant. This is an amazing cover, Peach Momoko style, with the xenomorph and an egg and all of this just amazing aspect to this cover. Let's get a close-up right here. Peach Momoko, of course, has been doing amazing covers through all of the companies, and apparently she's got an exclusive deal at Marvel now, even though I did see some other books from other publishers, but you know it takes forever for comics to be published, so I'm sure she's finishing on those contracts. Alien number one, brand new series, hard to believe it's over at Marvel since uh, I, I find Aliens comics synonymous with Dark Horse comics for the last literally 30 years, but how times change. I'm usually picking up the Spider-Man books over at Marvel, and here I got Nonstop Spider-Man. So here's a brand new series with Chris Bacciallo as the artist. I love Chris Bacciallo's style. I really enjoyed it when he was doing uh, Doctor Strange after the Secret Wars relaunch, and here it's cool to see him um, in, in another Spider title. He was doing the regular ASM run, and now I've got Nonstop Spider-Man with a million different variants. I wanted the die-cut variant, but I guess I didn't get it. King in Black, Spider-Man, Amazing Spider-Man number one. This is one of the 2078 King in Black books that are happening during uh, this event. And uh, yeah, it's more Spider-Man, it's more King in Black. We've got the character Reptil in this one, plus battling a bunch of symbiote dragons. Amazing Spider-Man, King in Black number one, regular cover. Did someone say variants? How about this amazing uh, Gleason cover that everyone loved that really flipped their lid on it and um, was sold out so fast and worth so much? Well, here we have the, what, the blue? The third printing? Yes, I have first printing, second printing, and I've got third printing. I wonder how many more printings there will be. But anyway, uh, this is issue 55 um, at the end of Last Remains. Um, just came out in shops. Here's the blue edition. It'll look great up on the wall. Another great book that'll look nice on my wall is this, Amazing Spider-Man 61, the two-tone variant. Now, who did the two-tone variant again? Whoops, spoiler alert if I'm showing stuff here. Oh yeah, Michael Cho. Uh, did I see a signature somewhere here? Usually you see Cho's... Well, the other Cho always puts his signature, but yes, this Cho. Anyway, the two-tone variant, I love this. Just stark black, white, and red style to it. There's a whole a variety of these that are coming out at Marvel at about the same time, but I picked up Spider-Man, of course, because he's the best. 61 debuted a brand new outfit for Spider-Man, and 62, spoiler alert, he's continuing to use the new outfit, so... Uh, what was the, what was it? It said new costume, new job, new adventure continues. So it might be a good spot to jump on board. Issue 61 and continue with 62 of Amazing Spider-Man with Spencer, Gleason, and Delgado. And speaking of Gleason covers, how about the uh, Carnage, Black, White, and Blood cover? This is a plain old uh, one. Um, well, I guess it's 0161. Okay, yeah, so it is one of the variants, not the cover A. It's... Uh, Right here, that number means something. That six means it's the six variant cover. So this is a brand new series all about uh, Carnage, and it's in black, white, and blood. So um, Marvel is doing a couple of these monochromatic sort of tales. DC as well. And I think it's kind of cool to vary things up. Let's not give too many spoilers away. Ooh, Cloak and Dagger. And uh, this is just a beautiful stark black, white, and blood cover of the new Carnage series. Happy birthday, Captain America. You don't look a day over 80. So I picked up uh, this uh, Captain America comics, number one, uh, which has a lot of great Cap stories. This is a beautiful variant cover, paying homage to the original Captain America, number one, where he's punching Hitler in the face. Fuck Nazis from now until forever. And so we've got a variety of creators um, so yeah, December 22nd, 1940. We've got a variety of creators lending their talents over to put a variety 
of uh, Captain America stories out there, reinterpretations, reprints, and so forth. So yeah, Captain America comics number one. I picked up the Black History Month covers last month, but one of the ones that got to my pull box last was the Captain America number one. So it's the Black History Month with the Falcon, and there was a whole variety of these covers. They were all amazing, of course. And here's a brand new uh, issue number one. This is the King in Black Captain America number one. That is one of the, again, 10,078 uh, tie-ins to that story. And I got it because of this amazing Black History Month Falcon cover. Love those colors. As for this month, it is the Women's History Month, and I picked up a few of the Women's History Month variants. So I got Spider-Woman, number 10, the Jessica Drew uh, Women's History Month variant. As we can see, I like what they're doing, that they have the character and then establish 1977 whenever the character debuted. And all of these have this great Jen Bartel cover, so I got one here. And I also got the Iron Man Hellcat, Patsy Walker. Uh, she doesn't currently have a uh, an ongoing series, R.I.P. to the previous one with Kate Leth at all. And here we have Patsy Walker, established 1944. So if you don't know the full history of Hellcat, Patsy Walker, it's a, it's a fascinating one. So this is number seven. Now, I wanted to get Silk, Silk number one. Uh, but that one, I, I ordered it too late. But I wanted to get the Women's History Month Silk number one. But I got these two. All right, let's go with America Chavez number one, variant edition, America Chavez made in the USA. So a brand new story with Kalinda Vazquez, Carlos Gomez et al. And yeah, I wanted to get that silk number one. Anyway, so uh, we've got a, a brand new America Chavez storyline. Uh, cool art as always, cool character. Here you got the number one, cool variant cover. Jumping at you with full power. Peach Bomoko has given the reins of the Marvel characters. She's doing a bunch of variant covers, a bunch of covers, but then uh, we've got an exclusive interior story from uh, Marvel. Now, to be ironic, I guess, I got the, the variant art germ cover of Demon Days, X-Men Demon Days, number one, instead of the Momoko cover, because I often get the Momoko cover of other books, but here I got the non-Momoko cover. Uh, I should probably also get the Momoko cover. Anyway, this is the Art Germ variant, and it's all story and art by Peach Momoko. So I cannot wait to read this one. It's in Momoko's style. Um, she's a Japanese artist that has just been the talk of the town in 2020 with her variant covers. And now here we have a complete story. No, no more spoilers. And I got issue number one, Art Germ variant. Happy birthday, Deadpool! 30 years of Deadpool, the Merc with a Mouth. To be honest, I'm not a big Deadpool fan, but I wanted to pick up this momentous issue because I like anthologies. I like comics that have a variety of stories in them. I think you get more for the, the bang for your buck when there's a bunch of stories involved. And here we have Deadpool Nerdy 30, number one. I still can't believe that's the official name of it. And so we got a bunch of writers and artists. Yes, co-creators Rob Liefeld and Fabian Nicieza make uh, some contributions to the book, as well as everyone else uh, under the sun. And uh, this is going to be a fun one. I got the Rob Liefeld variant. So um, the original, uh, one of the co-creators right here, um, doing the cover with all of the various characters behind the scenes here. See how fast you can name them all yourself. Happy birthday, Deadpool. Next up, I'm picking up the latest Star Wars series on the reg. Here's issue number 12, Operation Starlight Reflections of the Lost. So this takes place um, after uh, The Empire Strikes Back, the, the new reboot of the latest uh, Star Wars series. We got 75 issues of volume one, and now we restarted it. Actually, Marvel had it in the 70s and in the 80s, and it went over to, DC, uh, over to Dark Horse, and then it came back to Marvel. Uh, so I would have loved to have known what, what was all of that stuff that Marvel bought off of uh, Dark Horse, because it was Star Wars, it was Aliens, it was Predator, Conan, so many things. I hope uh, Dark Horse uh, continues to do well. Even, uh, anyway, here's a, here's a story with uh, Han and Chewbacca, even uh, though it takes place after the end of uh, Empire Strikes Back, but you know, timey-wimey. Are you picking up Star Wars The High Republic number one, the new Star Wars series that is the new hotness that everyone is in love with? If you didn't, you have a chance to get the fourth printing uh, not to show off, but let me show off. I have the first printing, the second printing, the third printing, and now the fourth printing. And if there's another one, I'll get that one too. Here we got some interior art. 
of this story. We've got the brand new redefinition of what the official Star Wars chronology is now, and uh, I, I hate it, just like everything I, I hate that uh, Disney has done with Star Wars. But anyway, that's just me being a curmudgeon. Here's a fun story with a brand new uh, set of characters taking place uh, before the time of the Skywalker saga. So very cool art, cool story. Can't wait to see how it goes. I've read issue one and two. I have number three right here, ready to read as well. But I picked up the fourth printing to add to the collection. Another book that I'm reading on the reg is Strange Academy. Here we have issue number nine, Scotty Young and Uberto Ramos as the main creative team, along with Edgar Delgado, of course, and Clayton Cowles. So I uh, started to browse through this one. It's kind of darker than I thought. Uh, no spoilers. But we have a whole bunch of youngsters that are learning the ways of magic. And it's been a cool uh, team book to see. Cool variety of variant covers. Very enjoyable characters. Issue number one is already through the roof. First printing in value. I've got uh, second print and third print, I think. Maybe second and fourth. Something like that. And it's been a, a fun, enjoyable read so far. I noticed they changed the... Uh, they changed the logo up here. It's usually this logo, but they changed it for that in the wrong direction. I guess they needed it to be because they needed all this empty space here. I don't know. They could have moved the artwork down and had the strange Academy logo correct. That's just me nitpicking again. That's what comic book fans do. Moving over to DC Comics. No, it's not just a complete Marvel haul. I have a bunch of other books. But here we have, Imper uh, but here we have Superman vs. Imperius Lex. Number three of three. So I was picking up all of the Future State books. I enjoyed their sort of soft reboot of things and Elseworld-ish quality to things. Here we have the third issue right here of the series concluding it. Superman and Lex Luthor of the Future. And in the new series, we've got Harley Quinn. We're past Future State, we're at the Infinite Frontier. We've got Harley Quinn at number one. And to be honest, I thought I ordered the, the one variant cover, that really shiny one that I put on my shorts preview video. I thought I ordered it, but I don't know why it wasn't in my haul here. I'm a bit disappointed on that. But anyway, interior art is cool. I like the sort of cartoony, gangly style of things, cool colors and so forth. Uh, there's a special appearance by uh, someone. And it's a brand new Harley volume four. Uh, this cover's still pretty cool. I like the sideways aspect of it. Um, yeah, Harley Quinn number one, volume four. Moving over to Image Comics, I picked up Invincible number one, the uh, Amazon Prime reprint of issue number one. How do they count it here? 00111. Yeah, so it's uh, Invincible, super hot character. It's got their own show now, extremely violent show from what I hear. I don't have Amazon, boo on Amazon for various political reasons, don't at me. And uh, yeah, cool, cool uh, variant cover. Well, not variant, but different from the original. He's facing to the right instead of to the left. And we've got the various characters as well. So if you never had a chance to read the first issue, here's a chance to reread it again in preparation for the new series. Happy birthday, Skybound, 2010 to 2020. The best superhero comic book in the universe, Spider-Man begs to differ. The Walking Dead, number 10, Deluxe Edition. I've been enjoying these. The new colorized version of The Walking Dead. If you never read the originals, here's a chance for you to read them in week by week. Obviously, you can get 10,000 omnibuses and compendiums and all of that. But I kind of like the serialized nature, the periodic nature of regular single issues or floppies of comics. Plus, it's got new back material, sort of the process of how the issue was made and so forth and often with a different cover. And as I understand it, supposedly these will never be reprinted in collections or compendiums or omnibuses or whatever. They're, you're only gonna be able to get them in single issues, although there have been second printings and such from issue one through five, I believe, or six. They did a second printing. So if you want to see them in color, you're not gonna get them in, in omnibuses. You gotta get them as singles. Coral! Congrats to Spawn, 316 issues, longest running independent title ever, even more than The Savage Dragon, even more than Gold Digger, even more than Knights of the Kitchen Table, etc. Here we have this beautiful Francesco Mattina cover, uh, Carlo Barben interiors. Uh, it definitely is, you need to kind of be up to date with what's going with Spawn so far. There's been a huge battle that's been going on. Yeah, I don't wanna, I don't wanna spoil it, but there's a lot of ba big battle versus Omega Spawn uh, in the last issue of these beautiful covers here. 
And also in preparation for Spawn's World, a brand new spin-off with a bunch of new Spawn characters. She Spawn, Gunslinger Spawn, Medieval Spawn, and one more. A bunch of Spawns. Spawns are spawning all over the place. So three issue 316. Commanders in Crisis, number something, six. I'm not reading this at all, but I picked this up for the cosplay covers. I'm always enjoying the cosplay clover covers on, on various comic books because um, it's really cool to see the interpretations of these fantastical characters in realistic ways. So yeah, I don't know at all what's going on in the story. Art seems cool. There's some clones there, I guess, or crises are going on and stuff. Cool action. Yeah, I don't know what's going on in the story at all. I got it for the cover. It's going to go up on my wall. Commanders in Crisis, number six, Steve Orlando and Dave Tinto. Crossover number one. Didn't this come out a while ago? Why, yes, it did, but this is the second printing. I wonder if there's one of the uh, super secret variants, because apparently they did a bunch of super secret variants. Uh, it's all about looking at this special, what comic are they reading right here? So that's actually issue number one, first printing that they're reading here. And maybe there's a super secret somewhere over here. I don't know. I doubt it's the super secret variant. But anyway, I got a second print of crossover number one. Got the first printing when it came out. Story seems interesting. It's uh, what if uh, comic books were real? Nuff said. A lot of interesting crossovers happening within this comic book. Deep Beyond, I picked this up because it's got a Mirka and Dolfo story, not interior art, um, but some of the covers, she does some of them, and here's a issue number one, second printing as well. This is a underwater horror comic, um, and it's a Mirka and Dolfo story, so I, I enjoyed her work on Unnatural mercy and unsacred and so here we have underwater um, second printing of issue number one this is the comic forget everything i've shown you so far this is the comic you've got to be reading the department of truth uh, by james tinian Ty tinian tiny onion um, and uh, martin simmons i, I believe and bd car uh, this is an amazing series uh, it's like the x-files uh, for the 21st century, and I loved The X-Files. This is the fourth printing, uh, completely devoid of color. Maybe fifth printing will be black and white, uh, will just be completely white with Department of Truth and on it, or nothing on it, I don't know, who knows. But anyway, this is an amazing book. It's extremely disturbing. There's some violence, realistic violence. Uh, the art, it, it's its an acquired taste. Some people might not like it, but I love this art. Just the scratchiness to it. Just such weird, beautiful, different art that shows you the true range of what the comic book medium can be. So I missed out on first printing. I got second printing. I had to get first printing off of eBay before prices got horrific. But then I picked up um, subsequent printings of issue one. And since I'm reading it on the regular, I also picked up number two. This is the third printing. I have first and second. And I also picked up the uh, issue number three, third printing over here. Issue number six. This is a second printing. Um, I loved all of the stories a lot so far, except issue number six. I thought the story changed way too much. But I'm sure we're getting back to the regular stuff very soon because, oh, then I did get issue seven. This is a, a variant cover right here. So I might, oh no, I see they stayed with the old art. Uh, okay, I haven't looked in this book just yet. So yeah, I'm sure they're just kind of doing some interesting side stories, but this is what I'm liking. This is the, this is the art right here, the Simmons art. This is what I love. And um, yeah, you know, it's it's technically well done, of course, way better than what I could do in issue number six, but it just completely changed the style and I know what they're trying to do here. And now when I first looked at it right now, the style also seems to be different. Uh, what are the creative team on this one? Tyler Boss, okay. Yeah, it's uh, it's technically good, but uh, I hope they go back to the Simmons art uh, very soon, or maybe like the back half uh, issues six and forward for a few issues are a different style than the first ones. But yeah, this is the comic you've got to be reading. The trade is out. But then, of course, singles are cool because singles are cool. 
Die, 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 number four by Robert Kirkman, Scott Gimple, Chris Burnham, and Nathan Fairbain. I'm not reading this book, but I picked up issue one, and I thought it was pretty interesting. Alternate reality where uh, President Obama actually refused to leave office, and thing, the future changed. Uh, so here we have uh, number 14, and yes, that is, can't wait to see Barack Hussein Obama f*** these aliens up. And I didn't know that this book went on into like supernat- uh, not supernatural, but extraterrestrial things. And uh, yeah, so I picked it up because OBZ is on the cover and uh, I browsed through it and the story seems pretty fun. So yep, uh, die, 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 number 14. Are you reading Haha, the new uh, book by the creator of um, Ice Cream Man. So here's another weird horror anthology sort of weird kind of book. This is issue number two, the second printing. I love this cover. I love the, the pink um, colorization, just a stark black and white. And we've got the weird clown aspect of things. Now, how do you pronounce this? Do you call it haha or haha? I like to call it haha, like, a, you know, like a Nelson from The Simpsons, I guess. Ha ha. No, he says it more like ha ha. I say it ha ha. How do you say it? Here's another book I'm reading on the reg, but it's only quarterly, so that means four times a year. Here we have Headlopper number fifteen, volume four, three of four. This is this is a this is a book that I picked up uh, with number one of four, volume four last year, and I enjoyed it a lot actually. This sort of storyline plus. Artwork is very enjoyable, and I have uh, can't wait to read it. It's very, it's kind of a very dense book. Adventure Time sort of style. Yeah, no more spoilers. And here is the, the latest of this particular chapter of all of the characters on their quest. Okay, cover your eyes if uh, cartoon nudity uh, is a thing for you. Three, two, one, you've been warned. Spoilers. All right, so we've got uh, Carmen number one. This is William Marsh uh, over still, we're still at image. Uh, here we have the Mila Manara variant. And basically it is an angel who comes to the rescue of a suicidal lady uh, to show her that life is worth living. And uh, there's like 99% of the book is full of nudity. But again, it's uh, cartoon nudity, so it's okay. And um, yeah, this... Um, Angel comes to save a life because life is worth living. And if things are tough sometimes, remember you've got friends and family and people to reach out to. And it doesn't have to come to this because we don't have a guardian angel sometimes ready to save us. Reach out when you can. Life is worth living. Next up, we've got... Radiant Black, number one. Second printing, I love this cover. This is definitely that vibe of the Power Rangers uh, that they're trying to put onto the book. Uh, I read uh, this, the first printing, of course, and I thought it was extremely slow. A lot of setup, maybe too much setup, but I can't wait to see how it goes with the next issues. I got issue number one. Uh, second printing, because I just loved this cover. It looks so epic. These giant mecha slash uh, Power Rangers anti characters and stuff. So, Radiant Black, number one, second print. Rat Queens, number 25. Finally, we get the next issues. This, this series is taking forever to complete, but um, the longer it lasts, the better, right? Because this is a, this is a pretty fun, well drawn, interesting uh, adventure type of series with a huge cast of characters and uh, a lot of uh, action going on and jokes. So, yep, being of Rat Queens, number 25. Another recent number one issue that I jumped on board as soon as I saw it was Stray Dogs. It's basically Don Bluth meets Silence of the Lambs. It's cute dogs, very well drawn. I love this art style, like I said, Don Bluth style. And there's a trailer actually on the uh, on the on the image website that that is that really fits well with this uh, first issue. Uh, this is issue number one, second printing because also issue number two just debuted. And um, yeah, it's a murder mystery with talking dogs uh, by Fleeks, Fornster, Simpson, and Rodriguez. So check it out. Issues are ongoing at the moment. 
Moving over to IDW, I've been reading the comic book history of XYZ. This is volume three of this series by Fred Van Lent and Ryan Dunleavy. Um, that they uh, they do the history of, there was a history of comics, there was a history of uh, cinema or cartoons, cartoon movies or something. And now here we have uh, animation. So it's, um, it's a very dense book that I like that really gives you an education into the world of history. Hey, there's Tom and Jerry. And with uh, their style of, uh, of animation. So this has been a very enjoyable read. There's, hey, there's uh, Osuma, right? Uh, Tetsuwan Atom. So this is the latest issue, number four, cover A. Been a very enjoyable series. Check it out. I've also been reading Sonic the Hedgehog, the ongoing series at IDW after they moved away from Archie four years ago. Uh, this, is, this is issue 38, cover A, and uh, I love it for a variety of reasons. It's a cool, fun story. I love the art, the characters. I was more of a Nintendo fan growing up, uh, but I like the this all-ages sort of adventure uh, with these classic characters, enjoying the covers a lot. I picked up the first few issues, and I'm back on it on the reg. I'm also reading Usagi Ojimbo after they moved over to IDW after being at Dark Horse for another 30 years. Here's issue number 17. I just noticed here, Sakai after Frazetta. So yeah, I guess there's a Frank Frazetta painting of, uh, I guess, Death Dealer or whatever versus something. And um, so now we have uh, Tom Luth, uh, back on issue 14, I believe. He uh, retired from coloring comics. And, and now we have the Hi-Fi Collective, Hi-Fi Design, doing the... Um, doing the interior color. So yeah, it's been a very enjoyable new Usagi series. I kind of want the variant cover a little bit more, uh, but that needed to be like a 10 copy uh, incentive and the shop couldn't quite get it. So here's a uh, regular cover here for Usagi ongoing series. And then this amazing, tremendous Peach Momoko cover for Usagi Ojimbo Wanderer's Road. This is reprints of classic Usagi stories. This style looks like it's 30 years old uh, with brand new covers. So it's classic stories, but new Momoko covers. This is your number five. They've all been beautiful and amazing. And this one is just one of the most beautiful covers I've ever seen. It's just so evocative. I just, it, I love this cover so much. Peach Momoko, you are amazing. IDW is publishing these huge Best of TMNT collections. We're at the Michelangelo, the fourth one now, where we reprint some classic series from back on Mirage Days and previous publishers in new color, because this original uh, Michelangelo Christmas story was in black and white, so that looks like a lot of snow to colorize nowadays. So if you want some classic TMNT stories of various generations, this looks like Erica Henderson art. Who did this one here? Micro series at IDW, Andy Kuhn, okay. Um, yeah, so it's a it's a very thick book with a lot of stories. Price is not so bad at all. And here we have Michelangelo, collect all four. I'm reading uh, Ninja Turtles ongoing series. We're at 115 at the moment. This is the Kevin Eastman variant cover with Peepop and Rocksteady. And this is, uh, you, 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 you kind of have to know what's going on. You can't really jump into issue 15, 115 at the moment. I like the interior art. I like the story. Kind of interesting how turtles have evolved or mutated into what they are nowadays. And it's been enjoyable so far. So yeah, TMNT number 115. And how about the turtle of the future? Here we have the last Ronin. Uh, issue number two finally is out. This is this is two. Uh, oh, this is two second printing. Yeah, I guess I already had first printing. Here's issue number two, second printing. No spoiler alerts on that. On uh, this series that's coming out like once every twenty months or something, and with so much hype. So yeah, I picked up issue one, first printing, second and third printing. Issue two, first printing. Now here's the second printing. Issue number three should be out next month, I believe. And I just got the ash can which I am very surprised at how huge it is. The size of this is just like no other comic out there. It's just such a weird size. And it's only like four pages. I didn't expect it to be so minimal. And apparently this book was so bad that they had to push it back to re to redo the art. Um, that's why we got issue number one coming out so late. And now we're also getting the latest issues kind of slowly. 
Next up at Boom Studios, I picked up Proctor Valley Road number one. Fun fact, there's actually a Proctor Valley Road not far from where I live. So I wonder if it's the same Proctor Valley Road. as a horror comic taking place in the 70s. I got the variant cover. Amazing psychedelic sort of covers here. Wouldn't you agree? Next up, I picked up Berserker number one at Boom Studios. Yes, this is the foil variant. I didn't even ask for this one, but I guess my comic shop... Uh, likes me, so that's great. I got the foil version, the Keanu Reeves co-written book. Can you believe that? Keanu Reeves writing a comic book. And that kind of looks like him too. So it's a very violent, interesting story. Perfect for Keanu Reeves. And yeah, I can't believe I got the foil variant. Lastly, from Boom Studios, I picked up Magic. Number one, the Ash Can Edition. The one per store version. Again, my comic shop loves me, I guess. Um, and um, kind of weird that it's only called Magic. They really needed to put a subtitle in there. Magic the Gathering and then something. There's going to be an ongoing series with McKay, Guara, and Consoni Ashcan Edition. So it's a preview of what's to come. Very cool variant cover. There's Rawl, there's Jace, there's Vraska, there's Kaya, and a bunch of... Uh, I don't know, that's a Dredge Skeleton maybe. And other stuff happening there. Yep, can't wait to read this one. Moving over to Dynamite, always get the cosplay covers. I picked up Vampirella, number 18, cosplay cover. And so um, this is the Vampirella story, ongoing story. There's a lot going on that you need to kind of be up on to really enjoy the book. And uh, I got it uh, mostly for the cosplay covers, but also keeping up on the story. Vengeance of Vampirella is the one that I'm really keeping up on because it's been enjoyable. It's 20 years after the death of Vampirella. She came back to save the Earth from Mistress Nyx, various cool covers, cool art by the... Uh, and then we've got uh, Tom, Tom Snigowski, who worked on the original story back in, back in the 90s. Here we have Volume 2, continuing the tales of the vengeance of Vampirella. Vampirella versus Purgatory. So here we have the Michael, Joseph Michael Linsner variant cover. I love these red tones. And then here's a story combining a couple of bad girls from the 90s. Well, Vampirella, of course, is from 1969, but we kind of think of her a bit also from the 90s bad girl craze, along with Purgatory over at Chaos Comics. I believe she's at Coffin Comics now. Anyway, we got the Linsner cover, and I also picked up the Final Order Cutoff Secret variant cover with Vampirella and Purgatory doing some fun little selfies here. So that's what I picked up here. And now let's finish off with some indies. Moving over to a blaze, we have the new Harry Potter, I mean, the new Eros Psyche by Maria Lovett. So this is uh, obviously an homage to the Harry Potter movies, um, movie poster, but this is a completely different kind of comic book than Harry Potter. It's Maria Lovett, who of course worked on, what was that one sexy comic book that they were, Faithless, that's it, volume one and volume two. So Maria Love it interiors with a variety of variant covers. There's also America and Dolpha one that is very enjoyable, but I wanted to go for this movie variant cover. Speaking of America and Dolpha, another comic that I'm reading on the reg is Unsacred, and here we have number five. This is Unsacred volume two, number five, and I just love this this story so much. It's it's a fun European sexy comedy with great art. Although Andolfo doesn't do the art on this one, we've got Elisa Pochetta on this one. Um, and it uh, follows the trials and tribulations of married life of Damiano and Angelina, a devil and an angel, with now their daughter about to start dating Severino, who uh, was a very annoying <laughs> character on the previous volumes when he was a little kid. So yeah, it's a, it's a fun, sexy uh, take on uh, dating. Volume 1 was about them dating, and then eventually getting married, having children, and then now it's their child, Eden, uh, all uh, grown up and ready to date. So, pretty fun, cool story. Unsacred, volume two, number five, at a blaze. At Aftershock, I picked up Maniac of New York. Now, this is a much heavier cardstock than the other comics so far, especially the indies. Uh, Maniac of New York, number one, from Aftershock. This is Elliot Kalan and Andrea Muti. Uh, so, basically, a uh, psycho killer... Uh, killing a bunch of people in, back in 2016, and no one was ever able to catch the killer, and now we just live, and this is all happening in New York, we just live 
with a psycho killer that is that just periodically comes out to to kill. So kind of interesting story. This cover is freaking epic. Uh, this is first printing, right? Uh, no, it's second printing, huh? Okay, so I don't. Now that I think about it, I don't think I have first printing. I think this, what tipped me off was that the cover is even bloodier than I remember of first printing. But that makes me think maybe I didn't get first printing. Anyway, here we have issue number one, ready for me to read it. Just freaking bloody cover. I'm going to get demonetized off of YouTube. Whoops. But anyway, I'm bringing the comics to you, Aftershock number one. All right. This will destroy you. Night Hunters, issue number one by Alexis Ziriti and uh, Dave Baker. So the art. This, this, this art definitely is not for everyone. It is for me... 9,000%. I love this art. It's that Adventure Time, Adult Swim, Underground, Comics with an X, grungy type of gross style that is just amazing. This character, this uh, artist, Alexis Ziriti, is amazing. I love this, this style of art. Uh, he also worked on uh, Space Riders, Vortex of Darkness and such. And uh, this art is just so... This just feels so not like the usual comic, and no more spoilers on that. But this, this is this is number one, second printing. This is from Floating World Comics, tiny independent uh, comic book publisher out there, uh, which is interesting because uh, the Space Riders book was published over at Black Mask. I don't. Know, I wonder if this is an imprint of Black Mask. But anyway, this is a book that I enjoyed a lot. This is issue one of four. Second printing, so I'm in it for the story, the art, the collectability of a small print run book, and this 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 story will just destroy you. You've gotta you've gotta read it. I highly recommend this one. It's gonna be four issues. Pick it up. VM Campos told you to. Cult of Dracula over at Source Point Press. This is a very violent comic. I'm not going to show anything from the inside. It's extremely violent on the inside, not, not on the level of crossed or whatever, but it's it's a lot of blood and and gore. Um, this is a this is a cult of Dracula that is into like human sacrifices and all of that. So not much to say on it, or I'll get demonetized. But I got um, regular cover, and then this amazing, also very grotesque snake lady version of the cover. This is cover, regular cover, yeah, 00111, and this one is 00121, so it's the, it's the other variant cover over at Source Point. Um, very brutal story about the cult of Dracula coming into the 21st century. I love both of these covers. Maybe this one a little bit more, but like them both. And here we have Peach Momoko Sketchbook. Uh, just kidding. This is the um, Blade Runner 20 Origins, 2009 um, Peach Momoko variant sketch cover. So it's interesting that they have like the blank back cover and then they have the actual sketch cover right here. So this is Blade Runner happening in the year 2009 on what happened in um, the beginning before it all actually started in the year 2019 of the original Blade Runner. And then there was also Blade Runner 2049, I believe. Uh, so yeah, this is an origin of, of things. And so yeah, from Titan Comics, we've got this Peach Momoko sketch cover. Over at Vault, I picked up Hollow Heart number one, second printing. This is the uh, second printing, actually, wait a minute, wait a minute, if we look carefully here, the, I don't think they're actually doing the barcode correctly. This is 00126. Usually the final digit means print number. I don't think this is a sixth printing. This is a second printing. Uh, so this maybe should have been 00112. Yeah, I don't know why that says a number six. This should be the second printing, right? We should see it somewhere here. Yeah, it's a second printing right there on the Indicia. Anyway, I thought this book, the story was very interesting, but it was extremely short. Basically, a man who is now a jumble of organs in a bio suit, living in constant pain and experimented upon, finds possible salvation, possible love uh, by, the, um, by the mechanic that is coming to fix him. So, uh, Hollow Heart over at Vault. There's a bunch of variant covers. I kind of like this cover by the main artist. And this is printing number two with kind of like variant uh, colors. So pretty cool. Alor Tucker. 
One more vault book. Here we have Witchblood number one. Take this amazing cover. It reminds me of the, um, what's that one vampire, uh, what's that one vampire movie from the 80s? I'm blanking on the name, but everyone loved it. So anyway, here's a brand new issue number one with these just beautiful 80s garish colors. And uh, this is by Matthew Ehrman and Lisa Sturl, but, and also Gabe Contreras. So yeah, it's uh, witches and vampires and adventure and over here, very cool art, um, but for mature readers and so forth. And uh, yeah, very enjoyable over at Vault. They've been doing some good books recently. And for the final bit of the haul, I wanted to pick up Spider-Man by Todd McFarlane. This is reprinting the original adjectively, ad adjectless Spider-Man um, comic and it's got of course extra material with some cool variant stuff here nice um and this uh yeah it's the first how much is it the first 16 issues one two three seven nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen why is 15 missing interesting and then we've got the x-force number four with the collab with rob liefeld so yeah classic spider-man where, where do we have the doom 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 part of things so they gave Todd McFarlane the full reins to do what they wanted with their number one character. So it's non-stop Todd McFarlane. There we go. Doom. The non-stop Todd McFarlane. It's the new sort of glossy reprinting, which I don't love. You know, the, the modern slick paper with these vintage. And there's a lot of gutter loss right there. You can't see anything about the lizard over there. Uh, but that's par for the course for modern trades, unfortunately, nowadays. Um, but yeah, all of this great uh, early Todd McFarlane Spider-Man stuff. Something is strange is going on. Plus it's got ancillary material at the back. A bunch of different covers and sketches of stuff and updated things. Ooh, that's nice. So, yep. Yeah, nostalgia. 1990. Speaking of Alexis Iriti and Black Mask, here we have the Volumen Uno of Space Riders. Uh, this is the Vortex of Madness. This is the Volume 1 from Black Mask. Let's see the synopsis. There's nothing subtle about Space Riders, and that's what makes it so great. Yeah, this is a completely over-the-top, mature, um, mature comic of um, just this psychedelic art, hyper-violence and bad words and everything and just weird futuristic characters captain peligro don't mess with him and mono his first mate so it's got this great latinx style to it that i that i totally dig that i relate to that i'm vibing with and this is the origin story no spoilers of the currently published one so i picked up the trade to that i wasn't able to get originally so that i can fully understand what's going on in the new series which i i, I reviewed in my uh, comic reviews and I love the comic so much, the, the latest volume of Space Riders. I read it, and then I reread it right away. I just loved it that much. And now I have the, the first volume to read, so I'm happy. I can't wait to, to finally get to that. Whew. Let's wrap up this epic um, comic haul with an issue of Heavy Metal, number 304, featuring Tarna from uh, the Heavy Metal movie. So the 304, variant cover 2, first printing. So yeah, classic heavy metal. It's been around decades, 304 issues. Anthology series of horror, sci-fi, sexiness, amazing art styles from all over the world. Uh, it's a great... If you're only, only going to read a little bit of comics at a time, get an anthology series uh, where you have a variety of artists and stories and things to enjoy. And something like heavy metal... <laughs> Something like heavy metal that's been around a long time, uh, I think, is a great pick because it just has such a great variety. Ooh, that's uh, I'm, I recommend that one on my uh, on my preview video, Cold Dead War. Anyway, uh, yeah, so heavy metal latest issue variant cover here with uh, featuring Tarna.
And that was the long version of the video. I hope you enjoyed it. We talked about a lot of comics, various first issues, some variant covers, some surprises here and there, just a bunch of comic books. And that's what this channel is all about, comic books, plus Magic the Gathering technology and other stuff. If you're not subscribed, I hope you do. Just hit the button right there to subscribe. Don't forget to ring the bell, Battle the Minotaur, and all that good stuff so that you can get alerted to what I do. These comic book shorts, one minute at a time, I tell you what's going on in the world of comics. My top 10 countdown video that I do every single week, my history of comic videos and other comic book related stuff in addition to Magic the Gathering videos, deck techs, technology, food videos, all that good stuff right here on the YouTube. Consider pledging at the Patreon, patreon.com slash vmcampos to join the VMC crew, to show me and other creators like me that you enjoy our content, that you enjoy watching our videos every day, every week, whenever we release our content, and that you show us one dollar at a time and up, that you enjoy our content. It keeps us funded, it keeps us going, it keeps us creating great content for you. Patreon.com slash VMCampos. Also, don't forget to check out the audio version of my podcast, my weekly podcast. Just search for VM Campos in any of your favorite podcasting apps. Spotify, Pandora, Google Play, Apple Podcast, Stitcher, Deezer, iHeartRadio, Amazon. It's everywhere. Just search for VM Campos. Subscribe and listen to me while you do your laundry or jog or your comic book collection organization or whatever you're doing just subscribe for free vm campos search it on all your favorite podcast apps as for this haul tell me what you thought about it what did i miss what are you reading what do you recommend tell me about it in the comments this has been vm campos and i'll see you in the comic shops